on this edition of The Self-Publishing Show. You don't own your book page on Amazon's website. Your Facebook profile, even though it's got 10,000 followers on your group or page, you don't own that. That can change at any time. Your online platform, however, is something that you own as an author, and it's something that you get to build however you want. Publishing is changing. No more gatekeepers. No more barriers. No one standing between you and your readers. Do you want to make a living from your writing? Join indie bestseller Mark Dawson and first-time author James Blatch as they shine a light on the secrets of self-publishing success. This is The Self-Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Hello and welcome to The Self-Publishing Show with James Blatch. And Mark Dawson. Relaxed in his new studio, his new suite. Have you got a red light somewhere? Um, no, I don't. I'm not a prostitute, James. So, uh, no, I don't. I borrowed I yours. <laughs> I, I turn my whole office red, try and keep the uh, family out. Does it um, work? No, it doesn't. No. I'm, I mean, they're awful. They just come in, they cross the red light. They used to call it running a red light in the BBC, and it's a don't do thing. You don't run a red light unless the Queen's dead, then you can run the red light. Um, I saw, I saw, of course, what happened with uh, your red light the other day when your son sunk a three-pointer from downtown, was very excited, rushed in, and I could hear you. He was on Facebook with your Nest camera, and um, I could hear you going. He was like, yeah, I'm so excited. And James was like, great. I was much more enthusiastic than we may the have, sound We may have up. mentioned that before, but it was, it was quite a funny video. <laughs> Parenting 101 by James Black. Crush your son's dreams. Yeah, of course, you've got to keep them grounded, haven't you? Don't let them get ideas above the station. <laughs> William, you're going to be average. Yes, average, apart from that one flash of genius. He does at the moment, at least, he's 14, and he does still want to be an RAF pilot, which I'd obviously thoroughly approve of. Yes. But, um, I have been talking to him this week about time-distance equations, and he's, I don't know, I, I don't feel his commitment at the moment to the math <laughs> side of it. But, uh, or running, keeping fit. But anyway, right. Okay, enough wiffle waffle. Let's talk something serious. Let's welcome our Patreon supporters. Catherine has pulled out all the stops and in uh, 20 seconds told us that we have Siren School, which is a great name. I presume it's a school. It could actually be someone's name. Uh, and Russian Hoskins from Oregon, USA. Thank you very much indeed for supporting us. They've been to patreon.com forward slash self-publishing show. Uh, where you can become a part of this organization you get access to the self-publishing formula university do you know what as we come out of lockdown well i say we come out of lockdown we are coming out of lockdown who knows whether there'll be a second wave and m quite a lot of the as we speak at the moment towards the end of june quite a lot of the southern part of the united states is is not looking great at the moment corona wise so they could i think we keep our self-publishing formula university open and free for now, at some point, it will go back to being a, a, a part of your enrollment in a course or because you subscribe to us on Patreon. Patreon. Uh, but at the moment, if you go to uh, self-publishing formula forward slash SPFU free, you can sign up to the university for free during this period of lockdown. Once you're in, you're in for life, by the way. Uh, so a good idea to get on board if you can. Regular live training. We've got some good ones coming up. We've got Pro Writing Aid. Uh, going to be doing one um, and uh, fresh from their podcast interview. Also, I think we'll probably get Presters on uh, to do a webinar. And we've got Alex from Klytics, who's always good value. In fact, that's something we could potentially talk about, Mark, if you're ready to talk about it. I know you've been uh, hatching a plan with him in the background. But I know before we get going to today's interview, which is really all about author platform building, building your platform as an author uh, with Nick Thacker a little bit later, we do want to talk about... Bookbub. I'm going to stop talking now because I can see you looking at me thinking he's, he's talked for two minutes again. Yeah, I can just, I'm looking at the counter just because it's James talking for two minutes. Um, you yeah, know, no one's, no one tunes in for you, James. They had to, they had to listen to me. So I'm going to, I'm going to add a lot. I'm going to granular detail on the ratings and find out <laughs> my approval um, ratings. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I had a book bub um, on Saturday, so we record this on Monday, and well, on Saturday, on my bo the first box set in the Milton series, so books one to three, down to 99 cents, and it went really well, um, you know, book bub still very effective, um, I, I haven't really noticed a huge difference in any of the time I've been using them, and that's probably my 35th or 40th even book bub deal, I've, I've been very lucky with how many I've been able to get. 
um, and still works, you know, really well. So also what I did this time was um, I've been advertising the, the box set quite heavily in Australia and the, and the States for the last couple of weeks. And I thought I would um, run some ads, very time sensitive, specific ads referring to the fact that you could get the first three books in a multi-million copy selling series for 99 pence or 99 cents. And um, well, I... You get all three books for 99 or three, 99 each? Mm. Yeah, it's a box set. So a box oh, okay. set with three books at 99 pence, 99 cents. So a really good deal. Um, obviously, I'm not making much in the royalty on that. I'm only going to be making 30 pence when you get the 30% royalty. Um, so, but no, I thought I'd, I thought I'd kind of just see how well they converted. And, and of course, I'm banking on read through. So I, I think I probably spent, I, I don't know exactly what it was, about $600, I think, in addition to the BookBub fee on Facebook ads. Um, for the period that it was at 99 cents, 99 pence running out yesterday. And I've just done the, the figures today and I got one of the ads, I don't remember the exact numbers, but the conversion metrics stood out. One of the ads converted at 35%, which is I've never ever seen, well, I have, but not for a long time, that, that, that very, very high level of conversion. And it was, you know, I think it's a combination of time sensitivity um, cause there's, there's a date on it. So this will end on Sunday, the X of, you know, whatever it was, 27th and the price was on it and lots of social proof in the fact that I referenced the fact that it was a million copy selling series, multi-million copy. And, and it just, it was, so it was very good. So those were converting very uh, effectively. Now the, the return on investment, because it was a, a high ad spend and a low return just on the, on the revenue coming in from the ad directly from the ad was something like 0.1, so ROAS, um, percentage of, of, you know, of the sale that I, that I was making was, was 0.1, which is, is dreadful. Obviously those ads get switched off immediately because it's just terrible. But when read through was factored in, um, so, you know, let's say I was, if, if I was converting at 35%, uh, you know, I was 35, if, in every hundred um, clicks, I was getting 35 new readers. And when you add in the read through on that, so the, the box set read through, even if you just imagine it was say $10, $10, which is very conservative as to new, new readers coming into the, the, the books that I've got, um, those were converting in terms of, um, lifetime read through return on investment at about 600%. So, you know, it was really so money in hand, dreadful. Um, so, you know, a lot, you could say, well, you've lost almost all of that $600, maybe you made a $50 back. But um, what I'm banking on, and I'll, I'll keep an eye on it and see whether I can detect it through the box sets two, three, four, and five, and, and perhaps the individual books. Um, that's what I'm looking at as, as to the kind of long tail effect of that spend. So um, experience would suggest that they, they'll do quite well. Yeah. Well, that's good. And we saw somebody posting into the group, I think only this week saying, oh, I've heard BookBub international deals aren't really worth it. I've been offered one. Uh, can you, you know, can you give any advice? And are you, obviously yours was, the US, yours was a US worldwide. worldwide deal. Mm. Um, but as we mentioned a couple of weeks ago, I had a international deal for the fused books that we, uh, we, mm -hmm. um, uh, we market and had 500 downloads in a day and a half. And I'm still feeling the benefit of that read through. Uh, without question in fact i will i'm doing a blog post and you can see the book bug spike and then the slow ramp up in the weeks that follow of uh page reads which is fantastic so um yeah. definitely as far as i'm concerned and you're concerned book bub is still the business oh yeah there's yeah, no question yeah it's the um it's the gold standard for um that, that kind of promotion yeah and i'm not just saying that because i know they're listening oh yeah they do listen actually if we mention that we mention book bub, we often get a little note from them we do love uh, the book by peeps they are a good team i'm missing our trips this year mark is that it's going to get to that point isn't it particularly in the september when it's I mean, it's actually a bit gray here today first day of wimbledon should have been um in the uk uh, but uh yeah we're missing um having some time some chin wagon drinks with uh with people from around the world including the book bub crew um what do you suggest for somebody who, so for, in our case with Fuse Books, let's do some of this marketing uh, strategy live on the podcast. We, I've had the book by International Deal a few weeks have gone by. That was the beginning of June, June 3rd. Should I now be looking at one or two of the other um, uh, newsletter services and so on to try and, um, you know, do something for the next month? 
Yeah, I mean, you, it won't hurt. I mean, you need to, a lot of them, these days aren't as effective as they used to be. Some, there are some that are still um, worth looking at. And I think there's a blog post on the Read C um, site. And uh, so hello to Ricardo, because he listens as well. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure they've actually kind of broken them down into tiers, as in you know, effectiveness, tier one, tier two, tier three. Um, so there are, I mean, BookBub is probably the only tier one. Um, and then the, the there are others that will be reasonably effective, but not, you know, you won't, you won't see anything like what you get from BookBub. But still worth, sometimes worth doing. Yeah, okay, I'll have a, a little look into that. And what about the countdown deal, which is a button I've never pressed on uh, KZP? Tell me about that. Yeah, that's just a different way of doing things. So you, 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 you basically the idea when they introduced it, and I don't think it's ever really taken off that way, was to was to have a tiered promotion. So it would be say ninety nine cents for one day. Then there'd be a counter that would say it's going up to one ninety nine, then two ninety nine, and three ninety nine, um, and you'd run that over you know, a set period of days. But the difference, the main difference, is that you'd get seventy percent rather than thirty percent when you dropped it below a dollar or a pound. Um, so unfortunately, you can't. You can't tie them in with the BookBub deal because um, BookBub include Australia as one of their markets, and you can't do a countdown deal in Australia. You can only do it in the UK and the US. So you, unfortunately, you have to um, you have to hit the thirty percent royalty, which is is a pity because you know, BookBub could, if they wanted to, give you the flexibility of not including Australia. I'm sorry, apologies to Australians listening. But if you didn't do that, you would be able to triple your your royalty um, and get up well, not quite triple, but more than double your royalty. So can you um, not can you not do the countdown deal and then manually change Australia in KDP? No, no, because if you the the price would go down. I, I'd have to double check. But I'm pretty now. I'm ninety nine percent sure you can't. So when when you set the price, it will you can't then tweak it in other jurisdictions. Um, yeah. So I mean, I hope I'm, I, I'd love to be proven wrong on that, but I'm I'm almost certain that you can't. So um, it it does make it a little bit more difficult to to benefit in that way for a big promotion. Um, but they're still, I mean, I'm thinking about doing, I, I've been meaning to for a little while, kind of run time sensitive deals. So maybe you'll say the first book in the series, put that down to 99 pence, 99 cents, and then run a lot of Facebook ads in the US and the UK. Um, and, you know, with the, the, the sure knowledge that you're going to lose money, um, well, actually not quite so sure. You would, you would still lose money, even if you were getting 70% um, on a dollar, you're not going to convert a fast enough rate to make that profitable. But what you're, of course, hoping for is that you know you get your 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 ten dollars or your fifteen dollar read through value, and that makes the ads profitable over the long term. Um, so that's on my list of things to do. So would you, as your countdown deal strategy, would you run ads to your countdown deal? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, if it's going to be, if you have a deal, so instead of three ninety nine, it's down to a dollar. That's that's worth worthy of running ads. Um, as I said, I, I think I would, I would be including time sensitivity in the ad. Okay, so you'd you'd you're talking about Facebook ads where you can adjust the copy to that degree. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. You can't you can't reference deals on on any right. Amazon ads. And in fact, I I think Amazon ads may be removing custom copy because I I haven't been able to do that for a while. So oh. even in even in accounts that I have where custom copy is possible, I was running ads the other day and it didn't give me the option. So Ooh. I. I I think that might be coming out so we better we better call janet yes well anyone familiar with janet margot's uh, course and is ads for authors will know that she puts custom copy in fact if you came onto the webinar you'll know that she puts the custom copy a very low down in terms of what you should be thinking about and worrying about she thinks there's, she's not seen evidence that it makes any difference um mm. yes and she also thinks there's a bit of a hangover um so it wouldn't surprise me if it's going to go Good. Okay. Well, that's interesting. It gives me some stuff to do. I like to think of it in months. I do like a nice clean uh, spreadsheet with a month. And we've got, we've built up our page reads per day to knocking on 50,000 now, which is amazing from where we started 11 or 12,000 a day. But I'd like to do something at the beginning of July to try and get a boost going through July. So I'll maybe look at a countdown deal and some strategy around that. Do a bit of tinkering in the old Facebook ads platform. Love a bit of that. Good. Okay, right. Let's move on to our interview, which is Nick Thacker, uh, who's been on many yonks ago, I think. Uh, we bump into Nick when we travel uh, in those bygone years. And uh, Nick is somebody who does take a holistic view uh, at authors. He's somebody who's worked also on the tech side quite a bit. So the interview is really about building your platform and not just when he says platform. It, I think the point of this interview is to try and think of your 
um, your real estate online as a platform, your presence on Amazon and Facebook uh, and your website, not simply put a website up and and think of that as a platform. So that's the uh, the purpose behind the interview. He's also somebody behind an email service which had a faltering start in the past. I think we do reference that in the interview and that looks like it might be coming back as an email service specifically for authors. Let's hear from Nick Thacker. This is The Self-Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Nick Thacker, welcome to The Self-Publishing Show. So welcome back, because I think you've been on in the past, have you not? You know, it's been such a long time, I'm not sure if I have. I'll have to go back and, and find some episodes. got a feeling you may have been on with John Logson some time ago, but anyway, we'll um, in the library somewhere. Uh, but uh, you're back, you're in Colorado Springs. As we've just been chatting pre-interview, you're in the process of beginning to move as far west as you can get and still be in the US. And then that's still not true, is it? Because I think Alaska uh, goes further west. I think Alaska is a little farther west. I know this is the furthest south. South, that's it. Yes. It's, a, it's a, one of those pub quiz questions, furthest right. north, south, west, and east states, and three of them are Alaska. <laughs> anyway, right. um, okay, there you go. So you're going to move to Hawaii, which is very exciting. And uh, so it seems like actually one of the great things about being in the industry that we're in, um, you know, uh, working from home, particularly as we're, of course, we can't go five minutes without mentioning the coronavirus. We're in the midst of that at the moment. Right. But uh, here we are as people selling electronics in ones and zeros that travels across the internet. And you can do that from anywhere, right? You can do it from the beach. You can do it from exactly. the Hawaiian beach, which sounds gorgeous. Well, we, we hope we get there. Again, as you mentioned, this uh, virus that we can't stop talking about um, may yeah. change our plans a little bit. It's, it's already messed with it a little bit, but that's the goal. We'll see if we can get down there. Um, as you said, as long as I have an internet connection, um, you know, even if, even if not, I'll fly over once, once a month and upload the books and then, you know, yeah. take the money in the, out of the bank and then come back if I need to. But yeah, we want to get out. We want to just, uh, just live that lifestyle. I, don't, so. I really hope we're not going to plunge back into the dark ages. Don't let's not wish that. <laughs> I really so hope kill. so. I'm not, I am way too doughy for that. I'm not prepared to, yeah, uh, to I can't, like that. I can rub sticks together, but no fire is <laughs> going to happen for a long time. Okay. Well, look, let's get, uh, let's get talking. I think it's a good chance to remind people about yourself. You are uh, a writer of a thriller novels. Is that you're a thriller writer, Nick? Thriller, action, adventure. Yep. Action, adventure, thriller. Talk to us a little bit about your writing first. My writing is um, very uh, genre uh, fiction, commercial fiction. Um, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm not trying to win a Nobel Peace Prize. I uh, or Nobel Prize. I guess would hmm. be. I am trying to win a Nobel Peace Prize. Yes, not a prize. That's good. Literature. Maybe a Pulitzer uh, Prize. Then you're not trying to win a Pulitzer, yeah, Pulitzer Prize. Not trying to win. You a don't Pulitzer have prize. to make. You don't have to apologize for writing genre fiction on this podcast. <laughs> No, no, no. I understand. I understand. I just, I'm trying to give people paint a picture of what, it, yeah. what it's like. Very, uh, same genre as Clive Cussler, Dan Brown. They're a little bit better than I am at it, but, um, I'm, that's what I'm working on. Um, I've got a series called the Harvey Bennett, um, thrillers, and it is a park ranger, sort of a reclusive individual. And he, it's sort of a deconstruction of a Jack Reacher character. You know, how did Jack Reacher become Jack Reacher? Sort of. Uh, like okay. It. Okay. Um, sells very well, and it's it's uh, been my bread and butter series. But I've also got a series about a bartender assassin named Mason Dixon. Uh, very tongue in cheek, edgy, sort of crime noir almost. Um, very different than than Harvey Bennett. But those are the two big series that I've got, the, the two main ones, and then of course a lot of co writing projects that I'm working on. They sound great. Uh, both uh, both series sound great. I love the uh, bartending assassin. That's a TV. That's a TV series right there, right? Ted. Dancing. Well, I'm just waiting, waiting for those option contracts to roll in. But yeah. you know, no, no bites yet. We'll start our production studio when the virus is gone. Um, okay, and we got talking a little while back when you developed Author.email, which was a mailing list. So I never know quite what to say because you say internet service provider, mailing service provider, email service provider, email service provider, yep. email ESP. service provider. So like the you know MailerLite and uh, and Mailchimp and uh, convert kit etc and you started one that was specifically geared around authors and i can remember some of the growing pains in those early days and we had that as well starting yeah. a new company and getting things up and going so give us an update on where author.email is now oh thanks for asking um you know as, as you remember we we did try to do a launch with you for self-publishing formula um and we pulled out because we felt as though we weren't going to scale properly and we didn't want to shoot ourselves or you in the foot by uh, forcing a lot of people through a system that wasn't quite ready to handle it. Um, it was very unfortunate and we hated that, but we kept working. And so the, over the past four or five years, um, my business partner and I, Kevin Tumlinson, have, um, have been building the system into what it is now, which is sort of a 2.0 that's, that's also now in, um, in an open beta sort of thing. Um, so there's a waiting list because, again, we want to make sure we can scale and, and maintain reputation, deliverability, 
building an email server is an absolute nightmare, but um, yeah. I highly do not recommend it. But um, we did because we stopped. We didn't want to pay three hundred dollars a month to Mailchimp, ConvertKit, or you know whoever it is, um, and we wanted to, to be able to do some of the things that um, that we're not able to do on other platforms. Uh, so author.email is up and running. There's a waiting list, uh, but we're we're onboarding now. Um, handful handful or two of people a week and trying to get them in the system. Um, obviously, there's still some user interface things that we're working on, but as far as the system and deliverability goes, um, so far it's been been very very cool. It's been working out really well. And where are you looking at at it? Where is it going to sit um, in terms of kind of Mailchimp and and ConvertKit and MailerLite at the moment? Is it in that mold? It is. It's very. It's essentially that's the idea. Is if you have MailerLite, um, we're trying to do the same thing, but restrict it to authors, and that gives us a few benefits. Um, namely, you know, we aren't going to be as aggressive like Mailchimp was against um, affiliate marketing links, because our authors are typically not in the internet marketing space. You know, they're they're not doing any harm by sending a, an affiliate link to their own book, um, so we don't care about that sort of thing. We're not forcing um, people to use. Um, well, anyway, without getting too technical and in the weeds, you know, the idea is that we wanted a service that instead of, you know, having a, a rack of computers over here that we're, we're using and, and trying to tweak to build our delivery server and build a reputation with ISPs around the world, we decided to go the cloud route. So we've got delivery servers through Amazon's SES program, Elastic Email, uh, Pepe Post over in the, um, I think it's Ukraine. And the idea is that we're, we're using their servers that have already been tested and, and run through the ringer. With ISP, so our deliverability is just as, just what you'd expect with a MailerLite or ConvertKit uh, or Mailchimp, and um, it's like I said, it's been it's been really cool because we can scale now on that side of it um, much quicker than we would be able to if we were just trying to build a server rack on our own. But the benefit to the authors is that it's far cheaper. Uh, for example, our, our our bottom package is ten ninety nine a month uh, right now, and it's uh, up to ten thousand subscribers. Um, we don't limit you. You can send as many emails as you want. We don't have limitations for autoresponders. Uh, you can build as many lists as you want within that. We count each email one time. So, okay. um, yeah. So it's it's just an affordable version of a MailerLite or uh, Mailchimp. Excellent. Well, good luck with that. We'll keep in touch and uh, see how that yeah. that rollout and growth goes. Um, and I think we're going to talk about platform building today, um, Nick. And I know you have a a, a particular not a beef. That's the wrong word for it. But you have a particular idea that <laughs> there's a difference between just assembling some of the nuts and bolts and having a a viable platform, a foundation for your author career. That's the perfect way to put it, James. It's it's exactly the difference. You know, I I came from marketing before um, in any of this writing stuff happened, and or for me, and so for me it was almost intuitive. You know, you, I don't want to just build a website. I want to build an online platform. Um, but it. To some people, that doesn't make sense. It, you know, the, the difference is subtle sometimes. But the essentially, you know, you have a website built as an author, which is just disseminating some information, um, who, who you are as an author. And if you want more, you know, click here, go here. I like to take the approach that your online presence is your platform, um, meaning it's something that you're not just disseminating information. You're actually engaging your readership a little bit more than you would uh, with just a website. Um, for example, instead of just having a, a website that lists all of your books and people can click away to it, and you've got an online store that you're selling special editions, and I know we'll get into all this stuff later, but the idea behind an online platform is that you own it. It's sort of like your, your home base online, whereas with Amazon, you don't own that real estate. You don't own your, your book page on Amazon's website. Your Facebook profile, even though it's got 10,000 followers on your group or page, um, you don't own that. That can change at any time. Your online platform, however, is something that you own um, as an author, and it's something that you get to build however you want. Yeah, part of your brand, your shop window, in that sense. Uh, it's exactly what it is. It's 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 your brand. It's your a completely controllable universe, your empire, if you will. Okay, so let's talk about what people should be aiming for then with a uh, with a website stroke platform. Uh, what do you think are the differentiating features then that are going to make this a platform rather than simply a website? Yeah, great question. I you know there's a, a few subtle things and they're they're pretty you know they're pretty small. Um, most of it though, James, comes down to the mindset. It comes down to the way you approach your author career. And so in the book, um, and what I gave when I give this presentation, uh, I'll I'll be doing this in in Vegas in November. Um, and I might give the same talk because I think it's really crucial. It, it sounds so simple, but I think it's crucial to understand that mindset is is almost, is, it's everything, at least when you get started. 
for example, these levels that I put in the book um, talk about different levels of author success um, as they relate to your platform, your online brand. And so this first level, um, it's basically just having a book, but it's not as simple as that. It's not just writing, okay, I've written a book and now I'm a level one author. It's actually this mindset shift. It's, it's going from having a book um, and you may not be making a lot of money, but you're making some, some money from it. It's coming in. Maybe it's $40 a, a month or whatever. Um, but you start to see that this is a real viable thing. You start to feel that this is a real um, avenue for income. Um, and so that's this mindset shift that happens at level one. So let's say you already have a website built and it's got your, you know, uh, you know, your book up there and, and a place to sign up for a mailing list. But really, until you, ha- until you make that mindset shift, there's, there's a difference. There, it's not really a platform yet because you're not treating that writing as a business at this point. So you're talking, that makes sense. yeah, it does. I think it does. I think you're talking about the sort of focus when you look at it and may, when you make decisions, making decisions that are commercially driving the point of you doing it rather than making decisions, which is, oh, I've got to have a website. This would be a nice Absolutely. picture on the website. You don't think, you shouldn't be thinking this is a nice picture on the website. So what's the function of that picture there? What's it doing? 100%. So it's that little detail that feeds into every decision you make. Absolutely. You know, when I wrote my first book, uh, originally it was called The Golden Crystal. Um, I since have changed it and re, uh, rewritten and launched it again. Um, but it was it was for me. I mean, it was a gift for my father. And But it was, I just wanted to see if I could do it. There was never any intention of making money from it. There was never any, you know, I, I wasn't going to put it on the website other than just put it on a sidebar of a blog that I was running. Um, there was no commercial intent behind any of that. Um, when I did it, I wrote the book and I, it was bad, <laughs> but it was, uh, it was good enough to give me other ideas for, for more books. And at that moment, when I had those other ideas pop into my mind and, and I wrote them down and took notes on those, um, it became kind of a commercial project at that point. It became something that I thought, well, you know, I, I can't imagine ever going full time doing this, but, um, I could probably make some money. And at that point, at that moment, that was when the mindset shift happened. And so I started approaching the next books um, more like a business. And what happened was that blog that I had, um, and it was just like a you know what a life hacking blog that everybody uh, in their 20s uh, builds at one point or another. Um, it became more of a, what's my brand as an author? And how do I have that reflected on the website? And so that's when the the, the, the shift from a website to a platform began. And of course, it wasn't finished, but that's about the time that that mindset shift for me happened. Yeah, I think one of the important things about this this approach that you're talking about is that you also don't waste time doing stuff that, you know, you've got to have a Twitter account. You've got to have a Twitter account. Why have you got to have a Twitter account? You know, why, right. Is there a viable commercial reason for having that? For some authors, there is, particularly in the nonfiction area. For others, it's a colossal mind, a colossal time sap that delivers nothing back. So again, bringing that that decision-making process to it, which I think is what you're talking about here. It is. And it's a great thing you brought that up too, because I treat, um, and and, and this is all discussed in the book too, um, because originally the book was was actually called Welcome Home, The Author's Guide to Building a Home Base. Um, And I I rewrote the whole thing and it's it's very different than than it was, but that core concept of having a home base as an online platform um, is still there. And Twitter, Facebook, Amazon description, Goodreads page, whatever it is, those are not home bases because you don't ever own them like you own your own home. Um, you're renting that space from them and they can change it or, you know, the landlord can pull that at any time, right? Um, and so those are what, are what I call outposts. And this mindset shift that happens, this going from a website to a platform that happens at some point during the level one phase of an author career um, involves recognizing what do I want to have as an outpost as an author? And what do I want to, you know, just ignore? Um, and that's not always easy to do because we do see people have massive success with Instagram, whether they're using ads uh, through, you know, Mark's, Mark's course or, or whether they're just posting uh, pictures of books, books that they're reading and, and people are following them and buying their books, whatever it is. There's always a success story in our niche that we can, we can copy. Um, but it's not always wise to copy all of the success stories and all of the niches, right? And so choosing those outposts is important, but choosing which ones not to focus on is equally as important. Yeah, and I think digging deep with people as well, finding out why it's so great to have these uh, conversations on this uh, on the self-publishing show and it, in our conference and in our Facebook groups, because you can see somebody who's very prolific on a platform 
and you think, oh, they're so good at that. Why aren't I doing that? And then you speak to them in person. And the first thing they say to you is, yeah, it makes me no money, but I enjoy doing it, which is a valid reason for doing it. But it's also good information for you. Um, it is very, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I've talked to some people at this conference. Um, I was just at recently superstars here in town um, with the same same response that you've got. Um, and I've also heard the response that, oh, it's I'm making a killing. I'm doing really well. And I'm yeah. using this platform and I'm sort of the Instagram author. Yeah. Um, and so what we do is we think as authors, that must be the thing that I'm missing. That must be it. And it's not as, you know, it's not chasing the silver bullet or anything necessarily that drastic, but it is this idea that we're obviously our book is perfect yes. and obviously it's our baby <laughs> and there's nothing we could do to improve our craft. Um, and so what we're missing is clearly just some outpost somewhere, some, you know, uh, hidden social media network that every, all the successful authors are using. And so we go chase those things and we don't give it a fair trial meaning we don't give it a fair chance to see if it actually could be a viable income stream for us or could take us to another level. Uh, we just treat it as, well, you know, I put a couple tweets out and no one bought my book. And so Twitter doesn't work for authors. Yeah. Which isn't necessarily true. Right. So yeah, um, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's choosing what not to focus on is very, very crucial at this point in an author career. At yeah. That level one, level two area. I, I was going to ask you about the book. I will, I will ask you about that, but I will just follow that. That also maybe conclude that little passage and say that this is actually not always easy to tell. You see lots of authors doing lots of different things. That's why it's great to follow Mark, by the way, because he that's Absolutely. kind of his thing is to say, this is what you should be doing, this is how I'm doing, this is how it works. Um, but you do need to spend a bit of time, don't you, um, doing some research. Now let's talk about the book because uh, uh, you've re referred to it a few times. Just tell us about it. No, and I promise it wasn't a, a shameless sales pitch. Um, it's just, this is all, this is, I, it's, it's fresh in my mind. You know, I just finished this, put it out there. I'm working on actually the third book now. The second one is BookBub Mastery, and it's about getting featured deals, not BookBub advertising. Sure. Um, and the third one I think will be about emails. But the point is, this first one is really the core uh, foundation for author careers. It's treating your, your writing like a business and how to do that. And it's what are the different levels of author success? And, and the whole point of it, when I give this talk or presentation, the point of it is showing authors that no matter where you are in your author career, no matter how bad or good your book is, or, or you know, you're, you're writing, you're assuming you're writing to the best of your ability um, without needing to go down the rabbit hole of improving craft. That's always a good thing to do, mm -hmm. but without that's necessarily a good, that's needing- a good rabbit hole to go down. It's, it's a good rabbit hole yeah. to go down. My point with all of this was to say to these authors that there's something you can do right now using the tools and resources that you have with your books as they are um, that can get you to the next level in your author career. So like I said, sure, improving craft is always a good thing. Working on character development in your books is always a good thing. But that probably isn't the thing that you're missing that's keeping you at a certain level in your author career. There's, there's something you can do. Um, and again, it's not a silver bullet. It's not finding this particular outpost um, and building, you know, a Twitter. It's, it's not that it's, it's treating it in a different, with a different mindset and kind of looking at how you can take your, your, your products, your, your brand and expand horizontally as well without, you know, needing more and more books or faster writing all the time. Um, anyway, that, that was the purpose of the book was to just to, to tell people, Hey, there's something you can do now that can probably get you to the next level in a certain amount of time. Yeah. Well, you can shamelessly plug the book. That's fine. Tell us the title and where to find it. <laughs> it's called Platform Mastery. And it's an indie author guide. That's sort of the, the little series that I've got going on. But uh, I'm, I'm just basically copying Chris Fox and, and you know the other guys that are doing their really, really good work um, with having kind of a series. It's not necessarily a series is what I mean. It's You can read each book by itself. And hey, if I need help with BookBub, I'll go pick up the second one. But um, because I like Chris Fox and I wanted to steal everything he's ever done because uh, he's amazing. I just made it a series. Yeah. So we talked a lot about the website and, and I like that analogy. It's home plate um, uh, or what should we say? There isn't really an home equivalent. Base. Yeah, home base. Yeah. Home base. What's home plate? That's the plate at home, home base, what, isn't what, it? It's home base. Yeah. Is that cricket? Is that home, home plate? Is that what you call it? No, we don't actually. I don't know where I got that. I thought home plate was a baseball expression, and I love baseball. Well, it, it is. I mean, yeah, the, the plate is what the, the base is. It's, yeah, it's another word yes, for base. But right? home base is the, sure. yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, I like that analogy. That your website remains to this day, and people always um, talk about the death of websites or the death of emails or the stuff that's been around for a few years, but they're not going anywhere, right. and they're still crucial parts of, uh, of what we do. Um, and the outliers, the uh, outposts, as you called them, 
the yeah, other the other bases, I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> can you give us can you give us a sort of a generalized guide as to what those other crucial bits would be, uh, and what, well, what what are less important for you? Sure, I can tell you the ones that are crucial for me. Sure. Um, again, like I said, I've kind of used the example of Twitter and Instagram. Those are potential outposts. Those are things that, and the way I'm defining that all right is the, the home base is what you own. That's your your space, right? That's your your fortress that you're defending, and you control that and you own that. It's your property. Outposts are anything else. If you don't own it, even if you're investing heavily into building it out, which could be a, a viable thing to do, um, you still don't own that. Therefore, it's never going to be your home base. So that's just getting the definitions out of the way. For me, obviously, I believe everyone's home base is their website. That's their author platform, right? Um, that's what we talked about earlier. And then for me personally, as an author, I use Facebook uh, as like I have an author page that I, I lean heavily on to promote books and, and, and you know, custom, um, reader engagement, things like that. Facebook, I find uh, very good for that sort of thing. Some people use Goodreads. Some people use um, uh, Twitter, which I've tried and failed at over the years. So that's not one of the outposts that I focus on. I have yeah. a Twitter account, but I, I don't do anything with it. No, I mean, I don't, I do not hear success stories from Twitter, either on the ads platform I typically don't. Uh, yeah. or, or uh, organically. I see people who enjoy being on there and they have a bit of a personality around sure, them. Sure. And I think maybe it gets to a point where that can work for you. But I think for the vast majority of us, it's, uh, it's somewhere where you get your politics and the weather. Well, and, and just, and you kind of answer the, the, that, that too, right? If we're writing fiction, Twitter is typically not going to be as useful a, a tool for us, typically. Now, I hesitate, I hesitate to say never because there's always going to be one fiction author that's like, oh, I make money on Twitter. And that, that probably is absolutely true. Um, but for the vast majority of us, you're right. It's not going to work. Now, if we're writing political nonfiction or we're doing business things in, in 140 characters or whatever they allow us now, um, is a good way to spread your message and get people on board with what you believe. Twitter could be an absolutely wonderful platform to generate some organic readership, um, or I should say outpost, even though it's a platform. Um, I'm yeah. using it, you know, a different term for that. Yeah. And uh, I suppose the other thing we need to do is, as you make the point there, so if you're writing nonfiction, maybe you're doing you know, political commentaries or whatever, Twitter could be the perfect place for you. It might work well for you. Um, if you're doing uh, YA, Instagram, might be an important platform for you Absolutely. if you're doing stuff that skews older you know like cold war thriller sort of things i write instagram maybe is going to be less useful and that's an important part also of understanding how the wider platform operates in, in making those good decisions absolutely and it really does at some point it comes down to what you as the author enjoy using mm -hmm. uh, because if you're going to make anything successful any any outpost or platform and you don't enjoy doing it you're going to be working you know, fighting an uphill battle you're really pushing against the stream yeah and that that is a difficult area i think and this is a real joe penn uh sort of philosophy is that you've got to be enjoying stuff otherwise it's not going to be sustainable for you why the hell should you be doing stuff if it's a slog um but i also talk to people for whom they're frightened of of the technology involved in in simple things on facebook and, and, and amazon ads and so on and yet I can see their books have an audience if they put some effort into finding it. So there's, there's a balance. I always think there's a balance here. You know, you can't avoid the fact we need to do some work. And right. sometimes you don't enjoy your work. Sometimes, you know, you just have to get through it. But uh, you do have to, I think, find those important things. So a Facebook page to have a Facebook ads platform. Now, you might decide in the long run that Facebook ads aren't as profitable for you or not profitable for you and you want to focus elsewhere. But you do need to get to that stage of making that good decision. And so, yes, I, I hear what you're saying about uh, do stuff that you enjoy, but at the same time, make good decisions about where you're going to put your effort in. You'll enjoy it if it starts totally. making you money, right? Well, that, there's that too, you know, absolutely. And I think it does come down to some common sense as well. Starting out when we don't know any better, um, I don't, there's no problem with going and building accounts at every social media network site on the, on the planet, but to actually take your core work time, um, that could otherwise be better spent elsewhere and focus on these things that just historically haven't paid dividends for authors seems to be, um, a waste of time. And in order to know what those things are, it, it requires research and being in the community and the network and just paying attention, you know, as an author, if I was just getting started today, I would go start reading forums, keyboards, or listen to your show, like that kind of stuff. It's a great, you know, you know, trial by fire from the fire hose, if you will. So much information, but you start to hear 
the same things repeated. Oh, book funnel is a great service to use or have a website yeah. and you need an email list. Those things are, are going to be repeated in every space within the, in the author community. Um, and so it would be very unwise to not follow that advice. Um, but you don't know what that advice is until you start to pay attention to those, those, um, you know, bastions of information and knowledge like this show and Mark's courses and, um, any, any other popular podcast that's out there right now. Yeah. It's funny how there are a few, there's a few sort of essentials, isn't there, that have emerged. I mean, there's lots of stuff you can do. Goodreads is a bit debate about that, but there's, right. I would right. say book funnel, vellum, Facebook ads, Amazon yes. ads, and your platform. Mm -hmm. There's five, there's five essentials. I don't, I, I can't see anybody making serious progress and not at least even if like I say they've decided one of those is not for them like Facebook ads I'm not going to do that I'm going to do Amazon you still got to get to that point to find that out there's there's essentials exactly I, um, I probably spent sixty thousand dollars total on Facebook ads and as a platform uh, it works really well for me for my author career to, to build an email list yep um, to give away freebies it doesn't work as well as Amazon ads to sell books sure. in, in the particular genre that I'm in but I I don't I don't I, I can't I'm not allowed to say that unless I've invested the money and the time and the effort into, I went through Mark's course. I followed all the instructions and did everything he said to do. And, and it's not that it, it didn't work. It just didn't work as well as the Amazon platform yep. did for me. Yeah. And that I always test that. And I go back every few months and I, I do some Facebook ads and let's try it now. Let's see what's, see what's changed. Yeah. Um, but you're, so you're exactly right. You have to get to the point where you know what works best for your particular career and where you are in whatever level I'm on. If I say I'm a level six author, by the time I try to get to level eight, maybe Facebook ads are much more important for me. And, and then they start to work again, you know? Yeah. It's strange how many conversations you have with people who say Facebook ads drive my business as an author and others who say, yeah, I've given up because they didn't really work for me. And it's, right. uh, it's actually right. quite difficult to pick up. I mean, I talk to people about the genres and I know um, bigger, some big urban fantasy authors for whom Facebook ads are absolutely crucial. Um, right. And yet other people are in fantasy only run Amazon ads now. Anyway, there you go. So sorry, you do have to explore that. You have to understand it yourself. Um, so, so to circle back back to the sort of core discussion about the websites um, uh, before we wrap up, Nick. So uh, how often should we be refreshing and sort of checking the relevancy of our, our platform? You know, my answer to this has changed over the years. Um, I used to, you know, again, I was the blogger. I was the guy who was saying update all the time and kind of the, the Joe Pin approach, you know, and, and maintaining sort of this, um, constantly updated, constantly fresh um, database of content. Um, as a fiction author only, I don't think that's as important these days. You know, I think Google, which means every search engine, but the, the one that we all really use, um, has certainly said and come out and, and proven that, you know, fresh content is better than old stale content. But what that means, I think, has changed over time. I don't think it's necessary as fiction authors to focus so much on maintaining a blog and keeping readers up to date through that sort of medium. Um, I think it's important to make sure our latest releases are there, you know, our covers of books. If we want to do sort of a book reveal, uh, an online platform is a perfect way to do that, to host that sort of thing. Um, I have an online store, for example, and I, I get into this in the book uh, with some later levels, if you will, like selling products related to your series and that kind of stuff. That's really great to have on your website. And that's a way of keeping everything fresh. Um, but I put all my updates um, in email format and send them to my readers through email. So that's sort of the way that I keep my content being sent out, meaning like, uh, you know, uh, what I'm doing, personal updates, books I'm working on. None of that stuff really lives on my website. It all goes directly to email. So in, in a sense, my website is a much more static, you know, not changing um, uh, platform. And again, I'm not saying that it's just here's my website and it's never going to be changed. I'm just saying that it's, it's not crucial these days um, in my opinion to worry about blogging mm -hmm. and making sure that we've got a, an article going up every week or every day. Um, and unless, uh, and again, this goes back to Joanna Penn, you know, unless you're the, the, um, the expert, you know, the, the, you were, you were doing the nonfiction side as well. Yeah. You're helping authors and, and doing that sort of thing. If you've got that side of it, um, then yeah, it, it's going to be, um, much more beneficial for you to write content and keep things up to date and make sure you're relevant in search terms and all that. But most people are searching for books on Amazon mm -hmm. or they're coming across them in their Facebook feed because of ads. Um, they're just not finding fiction to read by searching in Google. 
no fiction to read that's like this author and you know so is it a good is it a good way to think of your website as a place where some new readers will find their way and they'll go through it to get onto your your free book or your first book or whatever and then not it's not really a place where you're serving an audience who are coming back all the time it's a place for that initial initial but in which case it kind of stays fresh doesn't it because if it's new people it's serving all the time it doesn't need to be changed every that's exactly weeks. the way to look at it yeah it's fresh because the people who are seeing it are usually seeing it for the first or second time only um in in all of my books the call to action at the beginning and end is sign up for my mailing list and that link sends them to my website where they can sign up and all that and then click around and, and but my the whole purpose of that um platform for me is to drive people to sign up to my my newsletter yeah and again th- i'm speaking as a fiction author only now my nonfiction stuff that's a whole different ball game that's different uh, different strategies, different things are involved and, and keeping content on there is, is an important, important strategy for me. But for the fiction side, you're exactly right. It's people are hitting that website probably once and only once or twice. Um, and then if in, in, in they sign up to my mailing list, then I can now market to them through that. If I have a reason to go to the website, they want to get a new, um, uh, you know, I made a, a drinking mug, you know, that with my oh, yeah. characters, uh, the slogan or whatever on there. I have my, um, that's all that there you go exactly that that lives on the website so people go to the website to buy those things but they're not hanging out there they're not yeah. engaging with each other and communicating with one another or me it's all sort of a one-way communication mechanism yeah. look great nick thank you very much the keenly observant would have noticed that we're not wearing the same clothes we were wearing at the beginning of oh, this, I tried uh, this to, interview I, I thought i had the same stuff oh on. is it the same one? Oh, maybe i've given it away but i, I have a feeling i've got a different to. t-shirt on um, uh, so in the middle of our call, I, it was a conversation, I got a call to pick up my daughter from school because she developed a cough and, uh, you know, alarms go off and she's back home. She's fine uh, at the moment, but we're in quarantine. So uh, that's why we recorded this over over two legs. And I appreciate your patience and effort with that, Nick. It's great. And I've got to wish you luck because you've got this move to Hawaii, I guess, hanging in the balance a little bit at the moment. But um, it will happen much at some balance, point. Yeah. yeah, it will happen at some point. That's what we hope. And we'll come and see you because I want to visit some of those um, observatories that I have up on the volcanoes. Yes, you've got the, the Mauna Kea, yep, the one up there yeah. on, the, on the mountain. Come, come check it out. Awesome. Superb. Nick, thank you so much indeed for coming on to the show. Thanks for having me, James. This is the Self Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. There you go. There's Nick and uh, talking about author platforms. Your website's a couple of years old now, Mark. Time to refresh it. No, no, it costs a lot of money and it still does its job quite well. So no, I'm not actually looking at that. I'm going to be building onto it. So just actually commissioned the designers to add a store um, onto the page where I'll be offering signed copies. Well, so, you know, people sign in or they, you know, ask what they want, tell me what they want. They give them the dedication, they pay for it through WooCommerce and then uh, it spits out an email to me. But more importantly to, uh, I'm going to be hiring, a, I think a full-time PA, um, probably in the next week or two. And then she, there'll be one of her jobs is to kind of collect the uh, the book, uh, bag it up and send it to wherever in the world uh, the reader wants it to go. So yeah, that's going to be, it's a new project that we're, we're working on in the next couple of weeks. She's not going to sign it for you? No, I'll sign all the books. Um, there'll be like dedication as well. So well, that would be, <laughs> that would be fraudulent. And I certainly yes. won't do that. But um, yeah, we'll see. I don't think it's going to be a moneymaker, even if, you know, the, the, the add-on is quite expensive um, in, in the thousands, which I could probably get it done cheaper, but I'm too lazy to shop around. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just kind of a nice thing to have. So, you know, perhaps over time it will pay itself back. And your, um, your hardbacks, uh, the deal that you did, you've spoken about in the past, have uh, gone live. They've started appearing in the supermarkets. I mean, I'm avoiding supermarkets still at the moment, but I'm sure they're in there. We've seen a couple of photographs of them. Uh, but I did mm. notice, I think maybe in Audi, which is a, so a slightly uh, cheaper, cheap and cheerful supermarket in the UK, um, being sold at five pounds. I mean, that well, must be. Not, they're not in Audi. Not <laughs> in, in Audi. Asda. Asda. Okay, Asda. Five pounds. So, you know, that must yeah. be not far off what they cost to produce. I shouldn't think so. Yeah, that's I mean they're, that's the price in the supermarket. So Tesco, Sainsbury's, and Asda are all, all in that kind of five to six pound mark, and that's um that's deliberate. We're not really aiming to make any money on the hardback sale. It's really just to get volume so that we can hopefully hit the Sunday Times bestseller list. I have no idea whether that's possible or not. Um, numbers and you don't have to sell a ton uh, usually. Although since lockdown has finished sales appear to have been a bit higher than they would normally be so it may be a bit more competitive um 
but yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I mean, I'm kind of I'm fairly relaxed about it all. I I, I went went to I drove down to the Salisbury Tesco's on Saturday. And there's a big queue and it was raining and I I was completely underdressed for it, so I was freezing my ass off for half an hour to get in. And then of course when I got there, it wasn't there, so I was like, oh, that's annoying. So then I drove to Andover, which is about half an hour away. I went to the um Andover Asda, wasn't there. When I went to the Andover Sainsbury's, it wasn't there. Salisbury Sainsbury's, it wasn't, it wasn't there. Um, so I'm like, this is a bit annoying. But then my mum found it in the Asda and Lowestoft, so she sent me a copy. And then since then, I've had a few readers and actually a few SPF um, uh, uh, people um, have spotted it in their local stores and have been kind enough to take pictures and send them to me. So it's it's in some stores, not all stores. Um, so yeah, we'll see. I I. I can't really influence it hugely. So it's one of those things I'm just going to sit back and, and see what happens, I think. Yeah. Good. Well, it must be fun to see your book on the, on the shelf in the supermarket. And um, good luck with that race to the sun. I'll buy the Sunday Times on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, it probably won't be in there. But I think Actually, it's I've got the, the, so. it runs Sunday to Sunday. So I think it, this week it wouldn't be in because it's it's basically Sunday to Saturday. I don't know. It's a bit weird. But it's I, I spoke to the publisher about it. There is lots of weird timing issues and just kind of historical hang-ups as to yeah. when they calculate the the list because in the states it's tuesday to tuesday right um so sunday to sunday for us so okay. we'll see we'll see yeah good luck and obviously the visibility you get and you'll be ka-chinging away on the ebooks and print on demand as a result of that hopefully good okay thank you very much indeed mark i want to say thank you to nick thacker thank you to Catherine for churning out those patreons in record time and uh, that's it. We are on the back end of a very, very busy period. And I'm really hoping to have at least a couple of weeks before you kick my ass about all the f- ma- things that are going on in the future, which is already like a mountain in front of us. Can I have a couple of weeks off, boss? I have a couple of days. Days. Tough man. Got to get the end of month accounts done for then. Good. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, we will see you next week. All that it leaves me to say is that it's a goodbye from him. And a goodbye from me. Goodbye. Goodbye. Get show notes, the podcast archive, and free resources to boost your writing career at selfpublishingshow.com. Join our thriving Facebook group at selfpublishingshow.com forward slash Facebook. Support the show at patreon.com forward slash selfpublishingshow. And join us next week for more help and inspiration so that you can make your mark as a successful indie author. Publishing is changing, so get your words into the world and join the revolution with The Self-Publishing Show.